But producer John, you were able to see Kyrie Irving's latest Houdini act, that left-handed shot from a step inside the three-point line at the buzzer to give Dallas yet another win. I think that is five out of six. Luka Doncic made his return. I'm going to let you gloat, and then I'll just give you a 360 sort of view of Dallas at the moment for me. So go ahead. Here's your 15 minutes of fame. Oh, geez. Uh, I don't, I don't even know how much I want to gloat because I know the 360 degree thing. Like, it's not all perfect with the Dallas Mavericks, but like, damn, man, what a victory. They beat the champs. And like the Nuggets have been playing fantastic basketball, not just for weeks, for like months, but specifically lately, they starting to look like the team we saw in the playoffs last year. And in the first half of this game, I, I literally, I think I sent out a post on threads that maybe said this. There was a point where I was like, it is unfair that they have both Jokic and Aaron Gordon because those two guys just get down near the hoop, dominate, wait for the double team to come, and then find the other guy. And they were crushing it. But the Mavericks, they have Kyrie Irving. They have Luka Doncic. They don't have much else, but they played good defense, which they haven't been doing for a long time. And the key to this game, we'll get back to the game winner, the key to this game because I think the Mavericks had like 20 more rebounds than mm. the Nuggets. Like if you look at the team stats, it is hilarious because the Nuggets had more three pointers made, more free throws made, more assists, less turnovers, more block shots, more steals, a higher free throw percentage, a higher three point percentage by about 20 points, a higher field goal percentage. Mm -hmm. But the Mavericks had 22 more rebounds. That's not a Mavericks team that I am accustomed to, man. Like when they traded for Kyrie Irving, everyone was like, they're too small. They're too small. They're too small. When we saw them last year just fall apart and they got to right. the point where they tanked their way out of the play in so that they could retain their draft pick. And everyone was like, they're too small. They don't play enough defense. They're too small. They just dominated a team with Jokic and Aaron Gordon. They dominated them on the glass. That was amazing. And then at the end of the game to just be like, we need some points. Luca hit a step back three to tie the game. Kyrie hit. I mean, like the first thought that went through my head when I saw that was my dad, my uncles, my grandfather growing up telling me about magic hitting the sky hook, his rookie season when he had to play center, when Kareem was yeah, hurt in yeah, the finals. Yeah. And, and granted, this is not the finals. This is not even a playoff game. Right. But I'm like, he just hit a left handed sky hook from 20 feet to win the game. I mean, he's crazy. He's crazy. I saw Yahoo Sports tweeted out Dame's tweet where he said, uh, Kyrie's the most talented MF -er ever, man. I, 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 it's hard to argue. It's a hard point to argue. Well, he can do things that you don't teach, that you can't teach, that you never teach. And he's almost like a self-taught piano player. You know what I mean? Where you look at him and maybe he doesn't play the scales but he could just play a song by ear, like that sort of thing. Like he's just a freakish basketball player. And I'm not going to poo-poo Dallas, believe it or not, on oh, my good. 360 view. I'm not going to poo-poo him. It pulls them, at least as of this moment, into a three-way tie for sixth, I believe, with Phoenix and with Sacramento. So they want to get themselves out of that play-in. You, you definitely want to get out of the play in. You want to not only get out of the play in, you want to get off of that seven, eight line. You know what I mean? Because the Lakers and Golden State are both angling for that eighth seed. And I'm going to get to giving the league some credit in a little bit before I do what I do as far as some of the other things that I discussed earlier. But the thing with Dallas, and you spoke on it, you just touched on it, you lightly tapped on it, and I'm going to explore it a little bit more. The fact that Dallas has two guys that at the end of a game can create shots, can get great shots, and they don't need a whole lot of help. They don't need the screen. They don't need you bringing the defense to them. Kyrie, as we just saw, can create something out of nothing. He literally created something out of thin air. Luka, we've seen his movies. We've seen the magic in the playoffs, and he's been excellent in the second half of this season. If you're a Dallas fan and you're saying, all we got to do is get in. 
it doesn't matter who necessarily we play because we're probably going to be at some level of positional disadvantage, especially up front. If you wanted to play in Minnesota, you had to deal with Towns if he comes back, Rudy Gobert, and of course, the Ant-Man. If you're dealing with Oklahoma City, yeah, Oklahoma City's a little light in the pants. I'm 100% with you there. All you got is Chet as big dude, and then you got Jalen Williams, who's just dude. You know what I mean? I don't care how tall Jalen Williams is or isn't. That dude is a dude, and he's going to play hard, and he's going to get in your chest, and then you got Shea Gilgis Alexander to worry about. But I don't. I wouldn't worry about that if I were them. We're saying all we need to get is A, out of the play-in, John, and B, all we got to do is get to game one of a playoff series on the road in the fourth quarter in a competitive game because we got Kyrie and we got Luka, and if those butts get tight on the other end, because we can play loose and free. If I'm Dallas, I'm saying we're not playing with a whole lot of pressure. You're not playing with house money because there's always consequences. But you're not saying we have to win game one at home to establish home court advantage of a series. We have to win game two. They can just play loose and free. You keep it competitive. You tell Luka and Kyrie, one of you guys catch fire late, do your thing, and you steal a game on the road, and boom, home court advantage is flipped. I'll say this. Because I'm a fair man. You know this. I'm fair. You're emotional and passionate, yeah. but you are fair. Always. That was not the Nuggets' best game. They, they have several layers, levels, several levels above that. And in a seven-game series, I don't think Dallas stands a chance against Denver. I don't think really anyone stands a chance against Denver in a seven-game series. If you notice, I didn't say Denver. I right. said Oklahoma City and Minnesota. Good, I yeah. did not say Denver, but go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 and, and, and you're right, but like I, I don't want anyone to take away from this, like, wow, the Mavericks, they beat the Nuggets, the Mavericks are coming, the Mavericks are, they're not at that level. They they just, they caught the Nuggets at the right time, they had the right game plan, they hit the right shot. If this game even goes into overtime, like, you were uh, a week or two ago uh, getting on Jason Tatum for taking a shot with like four seconds left, or no, taking a shot at the end of the game instead of taking it with like five seconds left. This is the argument against that because Jamal Murray missed a shot with four seconds left. If he holds on to that for three more seconds, they go into overtime. I almost guarantee you Denver wins the game with more time. But Dallas happens to win. They played a good game. They deserve a win. I deserve to be happy and excited about it. You do. Watch out for Denver still. And and here's for as smart as basketball has gotten, because we love to say up and down that basketball has gotten so much smarter than what we've done. We're done with the 90s, and those guys are stupid, and they don't have left <laughs> hands and all that other shit, right? Yeah, y'all so smart. We've had two games on Sunday, on the Lord's Day. We've had two games where these two dudes who are really good at basketball, Jamal Murray and Kay Cunningham, decided to go against their natural mother-loving minds to go early when they didn't have to. Kay Cunningham, who is in year three, but in essence in year two, Goals with 10 seconds left. The Pistons coming back against the Miami. I'm there for that game. I'm there. And the Pistons come back, and it's a game that they probably weren't going to win in overtime. I have no problem with Cade going slightly early. I have a problem with, A, Miami has a, Miami has a foul to give. So that means if you're driving to the basket, they're probably just going to grab you and have you reset anyway. But you take a three with 10 seconds left, a contested three. It wasn't an open three. But if you're saying Kate is in his third year, learning experience, fine. What about the dude on the sideline? You get a stop. You don't have an advantage. You don't leave a young team to its own devices late in the game when they're drowning and they are not drowning per se, but they need they need every win that they can possibly get at this stage, John. And you're at home and you're in a game that you probably shouldn't be in because they were down big and they came back and they stormed back against a Miami Heat team that's really good. And normally some coaches, and John, I'm giving the Miami Heat the respect that they deserve, and you will too on this here podcast, okay? (laughs) There are things that we do on this podcast. We respect the Miami Heat, and and Victor Wimbenyama is big slim. Those are the only two rules that we got here. We don't got a whole lot of rules. All right. We don't got a whole lot of rules, but as a to me, John, to me as a coach, if you don't have the numbers, you don't have the advantage. You call a timeout. You know what I mean? 
and Kay Cunningham is a really good player, but he's still learning. It's not like you got Giannis up there at the top of the key and saying, okay, I'm going to figure this out. Okay, fine. I, I just, that, that disturbed me. You just mentioned Jamal Murray, another all NBA type of player, all NBA talent, at least. We're going to get to that later. John, well, I thought basketball was supposed to be so much smarter now. We're done with these. We're done with these old dudes. Like, ex- explain to me, John, explain this to me. Speak for your generation. Speak for the kids. Speak for the kids, John. Sir, I'm about three weeks younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I'm defending these dudes who are bashing on Michael Jordan's left hand does not actually make me a youngster. I do think basketball is a lot smarter now. Yeah, I, I think it's a lot more in depth. When, when you're coming down the court, it's a lot less just me against my man and throw a pick. Like, you know what the other actions are on the court and the different, like, flow offenses where it's like this guy's going to go here and this guy's going to go here, which are all just kind of like it grew out from the triangle offense. It became a bigger version of the triangle offense. But I think things can be more complex now. Mm. But I don't think coaches have necessarily gotten better. I don't think coaches are better at calling timeouts or anything like that. I think it's just there's a higher level of understanding in the game now. Oh, the game has reached a higher plane. I think so. And to your point, like, it's not necessarily that Cade tried to do something that was simple against complex. Like, Monty needed to call a timeout. You know why Kyrie had those seconds to... to, to you know why a play was drawn up to get Kyrie in a spot where he had some space against a guy who couldn't keep with him is because Jason Kidd called a timeout. Like they got that rebound off the Jamal Murray miss. They tried to run down. Jason Kidd was like, nope, timeout. We're advancing the ball and I'm writing yep. up a play. I'm with you. I'm with you. 100% with you. 